Hello everyone, welcome to It Matters. I am Vaishnavi. Today I am here to discuss one of the important topic in recent times which shook in the internet. So as we all know, we are facing a lot of problems while using these technologies and the AI technology is not an exception. So there were a lot of misconceptions, there were a lot of negatives, positives while using this AI. So why this happened? Why all this happened? What we have to do to prevent this? So quickly before we starting the video, so let me introduce you the IT expert, Mr. Kiran Chandra. Hello, sir. Thank you. Hi. So AI, deep fake, one of the hottest topic in recent times. So there were a lot of celebrities who are facing all these misconceptions or negativities regarding AI. So recently, heroine Rashmika Mandana also facing this AI issue. So what's your take on this? So what do you say about this? As you have correctly pointed out, this, this episode of Rashmika Mandana has drawn the eyeballs and the attention of this entire nation. There was huge celebrities who came in defense of her and this entire issue of the deep fakes has gone and it, in fact, this has been on the roller coaster for a while where the young girls have had been facing this kind of music yeah, all through. And the most problematic issue is that there was no system in place that would take action if any girl's image was done in a similar way or image any girl's video was mobbed in a similar way and just went it and it used to take turns and rounds in the social media platforms. And there isn't any enough regulation, enough uh, adequate measures to be able to stop it on the social media platforms. And I think uh, uh, this issue, the mention, the very mention of it is that the people are being calling it as the deep fake. And the entire purpose, when you look at it and say, when you call it deep fake, it only essentially means that the fakeness of that entire video can only be unearthed unless and until if you go deep down or deep dive into the entire video. So the AI, the existing AI has facilitated the entire process to in, uh, and it ensures that it is done in a matter of seconds with a quality that is almost nearly impossible for the human eye to identify the issue. But why they do all these things? Is that for public the reason why they do it is, see, the question is, uh, how do we look at this issue? If you were to look at this issue, there are three concepts of it. One is mischief or a crooked intent or a malified intent is one part of it. And most of these videos come with a malified intent or a crooked intent. Is that easy to create? It's, it's pretty, I mean, you see, it hardly takes for you to generate a 4K video by just giving a certain input as text. Why they give such easy access, by the way? See, it's not the question of giving who gets the easy access. Do you mean to say that easy access to create these videos? See, the question is, an, you need to really make a distinction. The distinction that one needs to make about is the abuse of technology for a certain uh, crooked activities or malified activities of malified intent and blaming the technology as such. So here, this is not, these are not the cases of blaming the technology. But these are the cases where you need to see that there was a malified intent to do it and it's only because of AI was there that they could do it with a great pace or they could do it absolutely accurately so that it, it would be highly impossible for somebody to figure it out through with the naked eye. And this is the fundamental difference. One is the malified intent is the one part of, is the first part of it which actually appears to be the entire if you look at the second part of it, the where has the AI to be regulated? It is at the level of algorithms. That is the second issue that also need to be thought about. For instance, if you just go back and if you give the historical data, that is how the artificial intelligence machines learns to learn, AI learns to have due diligence to be able to take some decisions on its own. So if you look at the historical data, there have been certain examples of how what the AI systems would be predicting in the case of after it went through all the Supreme Court and the court judgments in the US. The AI was basically giving two kinds of punishments to two different people for the same crime. If it was to be a white who participated in a murder, he was getting a less sentence, while if it was a black, 
the black was getting a very different, uh, diff very long sentence for the same crime. So this is where AI needs to be tamed. So it is at the level of the algorithms that such an uh, the AI should be tamed. But the issue of Rashmika Mandana, or the issue of Katrina Kaif, or for that matter, be it any celebrity, these are a certain things where the technology is being used to abuse people with a malified intent. So here you can't really blame the way in which AI has been built. It is the malified intent which needs to be questioned. And yes, AI is making it possible to get things done with a greater pace, greater speed, with absolutely accuracy so that people would be really alarmed. See, celebrities have their uh, legal support, have their followers, everybody support them. But what about commoners? What we have to do? see there is even in the case of celebrities the video has gone viral and then you could respond yes. you're only responding to the damage so this is the fundamental issue that still exists it is not the question of legal support alone they have their legal team no they have got their legal team yes. but even if they were to go and give a complaint in the cyber crime department what is it that the cyber crime department is able to do what is the police able to do see it's a gross violation of privacy of rasmika mandana the digital data Private Data Protection Bill doesn't help in safeguarding Rashmi Kamanandana in this episode. And in the case of common people, they are becoming a prey to some of these stalkers. For instance, cyber stalking, cyber bullying, cyber harassment. The, all these things have been happening. There aren't any rules and regulations to basically contain it if somebody does it under the guise of anonymity. For instance, if somebody does to a common person, and when a common person goes and gives a complaint in the cyber complaint, unless and until the person who has done it is not known, the police is in no position to bring those things down. Even when the person is known, they are basically following the routine procedures of talking to people and getting it down or removing it. But the most important issue is once it takes the social media platforms. The social media platforms are not responding to some of these issues and it takes you need to have a huge thousands of people to really get in to basically complain about a certain thing. It might happen on a hate news or a hateful incident. But when it comes to a lone commoner who is affected, there aren't any sufficient rules and regulations that are in place. These companies, for, for instance, all the corporates, for instance, let it be Google, let it be Meta or any of the social media platforms that have got the the power on which they become the medium, they are taking the safe harbor provision as intermediaries and they are not responding to it. And at the same time, at the same time, the government is not in a government, I mean to say this, a enforcement agencies are not in a position to ensure that such cases are brought to control. And this entire problem precisely lies with the legislation and the rules and reg regulations that are laid down by the central government, I think. Now, this is a very important case that says that despite the existence of a da data privacy bill or despite the existence of a privacy bill, it is not enabling stoppage of, it is not existing the protection of privacy. Is AI really necessary? See, AI is not just necessary, but it is inevitable. It solves the problems of the human race. For instance, if you look at it, this is an interesting piece of research that is happening. And if you ask me a question, is electricity necessary? What would be the answer? Electricity got into every production process. You name any industry, there is no industry that would not run without electricity. Similarly, AI is an instrument that actually assists, it's an assist, it's going to be an assistive technology where a certain decisions are going to be outsourced to the machines where human intelligence is not required. So, for instance, I would like to give you state an example of a very interesting research that is happening in IIT Chennai. We all are aware of the premature babies. The lower the economic ladder one is, the more vulnerable it is for the, it is going to be fatal for the mother and the child. There is an interesting research that is, the research at IIT Chennai is able to predict because every mother goes for a scan every month. Looking at the circumference of the head and the way the circumference of the head is growing, 
they're able to predict accurately if there is baby is going to be a premature baby or not. It is going to be a life-saving thing. It's very interesting. So AI is yet to come to every industry, is yet to come to every parts of our life. For instance, if there is there is an aging parent in the house, what happens when the pulse goes down or haphazardly or suddenly the pulse st starts falling it? Unless and until there is somebody around who is watching it happen, it would be difficult for someone of us to go for some help and offer some help. And even if we were to offer some help, again we need to be having access to an ambulance service with a CPR and they don't rush immediately. Six or seven minutes later is going to be fatal. But if you have a smart watch which is integrated to an AI system and it sends an automated, it sends a message with all the due diligence with additional parameters of health that an individual has, health conditions, preconditions and everything and based on which it sends a message to a nearby ambulance service which has got a CPR facility, it's going to be life saving. So AI is, needs to be an assistive technology. There is an abuse of AI that is happening, there is a demonization of AI that is happening. If Will people die because of electrocution or shock? Yes, they die. But is electricity all about shock and electrocution? I would say no. We just are in the very evolving stage of AI. AI, algorithmic work, the mathematical foundations of AI, all of them have been done quite some time back, at least 30, 40 years back. But what AI evolving as a technology that would be consumed by the human beings is just started to happen. We are just getting into that place. So hence AI is essentially an inevitability and it is going to be an assistive technology that is going to solve problems. What we need to be discussing now or what we need to speak about is AI being used for mischief or malified intent. So that cannot be attributed to AI itself. But if AI is built, a technology is built, AI technology or an AI solution that has been built, has been built with a malified intent, then comes the problem. It is as similar to as having a knives factory or having a kitchen knives factory and having a factory of sabers. Sabers are used to slaughter, but knives are used for cutlery. So the question is which kind of an AI is being built? Are you actually building a saber factory or are you actually building a cutlery factory? And hence is the question. That is why when I said an algorithmic regulation is something that is need to stop from abusive AI being built using the existing tools of AI, the same photo videos can be the same tool that has been used to morph or you could say have put Rashmika Mandana into trouble can still be used for you to get your old videos and enhance the video quality of it to 4K. That is the constructive use of that technology. But the same technology being used to abuse somebody has been done with a malified intent. So what we need to be discussing or the society should be engaged in discussing is what are the law enforcement agencies, how are they equipped? We have seen cases earlier. The section 66A of the IT Act they say that the intent of it was to stop some of these things or stop from the viral transmission of a message. But it had so many overarching powers, overarching reach that it was an ultra wide to the constitution. The constitution had to struck it down because it was only used to curtail freedom of speech. So, but we don't need to curtail freedom of speech. Freedom of speech should be there in the society, but there should be a certain rules and regulations that come out with strong action on the intermediaries and also in protect of the commons to protect the privacy of the individuals. So, how to prevent all these activities of AI? See again, I again repeat, it is not preventing the activities of AI. AI as an instrument being used to abuse somebody. Abuse happens, cyber stalking has been happening in the absence of AI. Stalking has been happening in the absence of internet. Bullying has been happening in the absence of internet. Now it has taken the space of internet and AI is again becoming an instrument of bullying. So we need stringent measures to curtail bullying 
even in the newer platforms it doesn't mean to say that it is you cannot blame ai for it you understand it right so we are a tech expert for 25 years so what's your call if it happens to one of your employees what's your call on see the thing is the workplace where i work around if it happens to somebody in my workplace then it means that that working environment is toxic so toxic environment at workplaces is ai responsible for it i don't know i don't think so yeah any more questions so okay, can we stop all this with using ai yeah it's quite possible to have ai becoming a tool to identify deep fake yes it needs to be done because deep fake cannot be visualized it cannot be found by the naked eye we need ai tools to identify if something is deep fake or not so we have built a tool for identifying if it's in, if a news is a fake news or not so we as vecha in collaboration with iit hyderabad we could develop something which could detect if the news is fake news or not it is coming the accuracy of it is close to 90% but now for instance if you were to look at text it is a simpler problem if you were to look at image it becomes a big tougher problem if it comes to images for instance there would be close to 15 to 22 frames per second it depends so it means for every second you need to look at close to 22 images so to be, to actually have some of this tools to be built we need huge enormous computing power we need people to be working on it so as we are we are appealing to the developer community to join hands and also the institutions to join hands and so that we'll be building something as an ai tool that would analyze if something if a news or a video or an image is a deep fake or not thank you so much sir look likes the ai is a very strong technology there is positive and negative sides of ai the point is how we using it it makes a huge impact so this is the session for today so we learn a lot of about ai so so let's see what ai does in future so this is the end of the session and this is vaishnavi and signing off so keep watching it matters